greatest threat to VHS horror movie ever? Idle Hands, 1999, Explored. There is nothing better than watching teenagers from the 90s wade through blood and gore using slapstick comedy. Idle Hands is a 1999 American teen horror film directed by Robin Flinder and starring Devin Sala, Seth Green, Eldon Henson, Jessica Alba, and Vivica A. Fox. The main plot revolves around Anton Tobias, a typical stoner youngster whose hand gets possessed and goes on a murdering spree after being severed from his arm. It was written by Terry Hughes and Ron Milbauer and directed by Robin Flinder. The film title is obviously inspired by the saying we have heard parents say since we were children, idle hands makes for the devil's playthings. The film received many negative reviews and grossed around $4 million, much less than its budget of $25 million. However, I think it is time for the critics to reconsider this movie. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. The devil will find work for idle hands to do. Idle hands, 1999. When Mr. and Mrs. Tobias get into bed, they notice a message on the ceiling saying, I'm under the bed and hear a disturbance outside. So obviously the man of the house, Mr. Tobias, investigates the sounds while Mrs. Tobias dials 911 only to be pulled beneath the bed and killed. Anton, Devin Sawa, wakes up on Halloween morning and goes through the contents of the fridge and TV, oblivious to the pool of blood on the floor. Later, he finds that his lovable dad, Fred Willer, and mom, Connie Ray, have been turned into headless Halloween decorations. Their stoner son, who has been oblivious to their disappearance and death for the past seven days, runs out of pot one morning. Anton takes some pocket money and goes to meet his similarly irresponsible stoner friends, Mick, Seth Green, and Peanut. He goes to Peanut's place to acquire some stuff, but he is also out. He catches sight of Molly, Jessica Alba, the girl next door who has been his little crush forever. Anton's friends urge him to chat with her. So he goes to return Molly's lyrics book after seeing her drop it, but he ends up being really awkward, just like a regular teenage boy. After hanging out with his friends, Anton returns home and tries to make his own joint using oregano and nutmeg. He then proceeds to pour dish soap into his mouth to cleanse himself of the aftertaste. Funnily enough, he uses real dish soap, and Sawa came up with the gap on the spot while filming. He then makes a sandwich for himself while he sees blood on the knife he's using and his cat Bones is playing with an eyeball. Like any normal human being, no matter how blazed, he panics and trips while running downstairs only to find his parents' bodies dressed as for Halloween decorations, making Peanut show up at that time and he shows them the bodies. For people who did not notice dead bodies on the ground, they somehow managed to realize that Anton is the killer. Mick tries to dial 911, but Anton pulls out the phone cord and swears he isn't the murderer, until his hand murders Mick with the glass bottle. You can't really argue with hard evidence, like a dead friend with the bottle sticking out of his head. But Anton sure tries anyway. He tries to assure Peanut that he didn't do it on purpose. Just then, they discover Anton's hand is possessed. Peanut is then chased into the basement by Anton's hand in which he tries to stop, so Peanut may escape. But his hand overpowers him and decapitates Peanut. Anton's hand seems to have a mind of its own and a vendetta against cats since it throws Bones, his cat, out of the window. He attempts to find Bones, but the hand pulls him into Molly's doorstep and rings her doorbell instead. The hand may be murderous, but it sure is a wingman. Molly invites Anton into her room to have sex when Anton's murderous hand decides to choke her. She seems oblivious to the murderous intentions and thinks he's just kinky. Thankfully, her parents come back, so he leaves. Anton buries the bodies of his friends and parents in his backyard with a lovely eulogy, asking for their forgiveness. Just then, Mick and Peanut return as zombies and kick him unconscious. They were just too lazy to take the long walk to heaven. They rejected heaven just to hang out on Anton's couch and throw cheese puffs at Peanut's decapitated head. He seeks help from his friend Randy, who listens to satanic music. He tells him to keep his hands occupied, so we see Anton picking up knitting. It seems to be going well until two police officers tried to catch him independently. They were obviously not successful. One ended up with a knitting needle through his brain while the other got tasered to death. Anton decides that the solution to his murderous hand is to cut it off. He cuts off his hand and Mick cauterizes it with an iron only to see bad move Anton written on the floor. Anton traps the hand in a microwave and burns it while Peanut and Mick go for a first aid kit. Anton goes home after sending Molly to the school dance to finish the hand. Unfortunately, Peanut and Mick release the hand by accident. Debbie LeCure, a druidic high priestess, is on the hunt for the spirit responsible for the killings across the country. Debbie ends up meeting Randy at the bowling alley and they go on a quest to stop the possessed hand. After stealing Randy's truck, the three proceed to the school. While Anton searches for the hand, Mick and Peanut attend the 
Halloween dance to keep an eye on Molly. Randy and Debbie meet Anton for the first time at the school while Anton tries to find the hand. Debbie tries to stab him with a cool looking knife when he shows her his stub of a hand. If the evil is after Molly, then her soul will be dragged to hell at midnight, Debbie explains. Anton interrupts the dance and warns everyone about his hand, but he gets booed in response. After having sharpened its nails with a pencil sharpener, the hand rips the scalp of the lead vocalist of the band, causing panic at the dance. Molly and her buddy Tanya use the vents to flee. They try to pass through a fan that they have stopped using. Unfortunately, Tanya becomes entangled in the rope. While Molly tries to pull Tanya off the fan, Anton's hand removes Tanya's shoe, leading to her death by the fan. Anton comes into the art room and battles the hand while it is inside a puppet, but it escapes to the auto shop where Molly is strapped to a car and is being hoisted towards the ceiling to be crushed to her death. Anton, Mick, and Peanub are fighting for possession of the controls. Mick and Peanub decide to smoke for strength from a mechanic's bong. This is when Anton gets a great idea and blows smoke into the hand, which is still encased in a hand puppet, until it drops the controls. Turns out that severed hands that don't have mouths can also get high. With this, they are able to save Molly. And just then, Debbie slams a ritual knife into the hand, which comes to a halt in a cloud of smoke and flame. Anton frees Molly from the automobile's roof, and the two, very smartly, stand underneath it to make out. Peanub unintentionally hits the automobile controls while lighting the bong for Mick, and Anton is crushed by the vehicle. Anton is in the body cast at the hospital at the movies in heaven to be with Molly. And Mick and Peanub are now his guardian angels. When he is alone in his room, he looks up at the ceiling and notices the message, I am under the bed, scribbled on the ceiling. Mick and Peanut stroll down the corridor debating whether or not to tell Anton they wrote the note, but ultimately decide against it, chuckling. It's not me! It's my hand! It's like... Is there going to be an Idle Hand sequel? Although Hughes and Milbar, the writers of Idle Hand, are unlikely to be working on a sequel to Idle Hands, Sawa told Comic Book that he would gladly return for a reboot or sequel. He said his time on set was like being at summer camp, which we can only assume is a good thing since he said that Idle Hands is at the top of his list of sequels he'd like to work on. Despite the minuscule chance of a sequel, he has expressed interest in a remake with a new cast in a modern setting. Sawa showed interest in a sequel to Idle Hands, even in 2019, but he highlighted the original film's box office troubles as a reason why, why a reboot would probably never happen. It would be a risk for Hollywood, but it isn't always reluctant to take risks. Even though certain installments of Scream, Transformers, and Fantastic Four series perform poorly at the box office, they nevertheless receive sequels. So there's still hope for Idle Hands aficionados. I certainly hope to see the film return in a sequel because it did not receive the love it deserved. The characters are fun-loving that remind you of all the good memories of high school. The dynamics between the friends, especially Mick and Peanut, is super fun to watch. We can only hope that Hollywood realizes what an underappreciated gem the movie is and give it the sequel it deserves. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one. Be safe. Thanks everyone.